know you can't give up like scheme or anything, but last week it seemed like y'all got a little more pressure from the linebacking side of things. What were you maybe seeing, or how did you guys kind of grade out in terms of getting a little more pressure on LSU? Well, the guys were just playing fast. You know, when uh, when you, when the guys can play with confidence, they know what's going on, and um, you know, obviously being in Davis Wade gives you a little bit more juice, gives you some excitement, and the guys they were just excited to go. You know, anytime we can line up in that stadium, those guys are rearing, and so that, that's what you saw a little bit of last week. How do you take that on the road? And that kind of juice excitement, how do you transfer that over the road games? Well, you like to get as many cowbells in whatever stadium that you're in, right? So <laughs> it, start, it starts with our fan base. Um, but also the guys, I mean, just being honed in, focusing in on a game plan, harnessing our chemistry and synergy together, um, the more we can do that, the more energy you see, the more passion you see, the more consistency you'll see. I, I know there's, you know, is that something, because you're maybe not getting as much push from maybe the defensive line, is that something that y'all have talked about, just getting conscious effort of, like, getting a little more pass rush from the linebacking group this year? Or at least well, I, well, I'll tell you this. When, in any defensive scheme, the more that you can wreck the decision maker on the opposite, the opposing team, the better. And so we, we've discussed ways of doing that, um, whether it's, um, you know, four-man rush, three-man rush, bring in some blitz packages. We, we've, we've discussed all those things. The thing about it is that all the guys are buying in, right? The guys are just – if they're consistent in doing their job and being passionate about doing their 111th when they're on the field, part of the defense, then you, you stand a good chance to be successful. I saw a lot of Aaron Burley on Saturday. Mm -hmm. played a good number of snaps. Just to talk about his development and how he's coming along so far. Aaron Burley, you know, Louisiana kid, so you knew that game meant a lot to him, right? And all of his family was here. Um, he's a young man who takes initiative and wants to be special. He wants to be special. He has a lot of ability, has a lot of desire. And uh, right now he's just a little young, but over the course of time you'll you'll see more and more rare. And um, he's a pleasure to coach, man. And he, he's really special, really special. As a former Tennessee guy yourself, what would, what would you have considered the challenge of chasing a guy like Kevin Mullen around? If you make plays with his feet, make quick decisions, get rid of the ball quickly, how do you, how do you handle a guy like that? You know, quarterbacks like that always add an extra dimension to the game from a defensive standpoint. And so it's all about kind of going back to what I was telling Brandon. You know, it's about everybody doing their one eleventh. As long as everybody's tuned in on what they're supposed to do and their responsibility, and, and everybody plays together, you know, with, with unity and synergy, you got a chance with, with a guy like that. Now, he, he's a really good player. A lot of respect to him. The coaches there have done a great job with him. Um, he, he will be a tremendous challenge. Um, but uh, with our guys, as long as we do our part, you know, we like, we'll, we'll have a chance. I know every quarterback's different, but I mean, you see a guy like Bo Nix at Auburn. Is there any comp between him and, uh, and Kellen Mond, like just seeing a guy who can move the ball with those arm and his legs? I think they're both unique players, and so I don't really like comparing guys. Yeah. He, ha he has his own unique skill set, and with his own unique skill set presents challenges, right? And so each game, it's different. Each opponent, particularly the, pair, the player of that position, has its own unique challenges. And so we, we're equipping our guys to handle that. Looking behind the quarterback, what do you see from the Texas a and confidence? They're talented, really talented. Those guys have done a great, phenomenal job recruiting. They've done a phenomenal job developing those guys. Um, they play together. Um, they present challenges across the board. Um, again, it, it begins with the guys up front, and then it, it, it goes to the quarterback. And I just, I just told you guys how, how good I think he is, how special he can be. And so, again, it's about, it's about their 11 versus our 11 each time. You mentioned uh, Aaron, rather, the guy who made some plays. Leo was in the backfield a bunch last mm -hmm. week. How, much, how did he kind of grade out this week? It seemed like he was kind of in the middle of things all day. Yeah, Leo played well. Leo played well. But, you know, but the thing about it is that game's behind us. And we can't do anything about what's behind us or games that have already been played. So now the mentality that I try to preach to those guys and try to instill in them is about what, what can you do for the next game coming up? What can you do on a day-to-day -day process to develop yourself mentally and physically and emotionally, quite honestly, to make sure that you go out and that you're su successful and that you do your part. You know, you don't have to do anything more than your part. And if we all do that, then you got an opportunity. Coach Warren said that uh, y'all had a plan put in place for season how to handle the guys with limited availability this year. How do you walk that fine line of being able to keep them involved in practices and yet not take away snaps from the guys who might be playing this week or next week? And is that a really tough balancing act? You know, that, that's not my area of expertise. I'll, I'll, I'll defer to Coach Moore on that one.